The objective of firms is to take a series of commodities, referred to as inputs, and turn them into other commodities, referred to as output, while seeking an economic profit. The production set is defined by the following equation, where y corresponds to the addition of every different good being produced, and where y belongs to all feasible production plans. The most commonly used example to define two different production factors are capital and labor. Every production set has a number of characteristics common to all the production sets. Firstly, the production Y is non-empty, since in the opposite case, we will have nothing to talk about. Secondly, Y is closed. This property means that it exists within a boundary, which is necessary mainly for technical reasons, as in the opposite case, trying to maximize the function will not be possible. Thirdly, there is no free production, which basically means that all production will imply using inputs to some extent. And the last common property is free disposal. This property means that firms are able to throw any input they do not need to use. Up until now, we have only stated properties common to all production functions. However, we will also name and comment on other properties that hold for many production sets. Irreversibility says that once a set of inputs have undergone the production process, it cannot be undone and they cannot come back to their initial state. Possibility of an action refers to the ability of a firm to have the choice not to perform any action. It is also common to add the following three assumptions. Additivity says that if Y1 and Y2 are elements of the same feasible production set Y, then the production set that consists of adding Y1 and Y2 is also a part of the same feasible production set. Similarly, Divisibility says that if a firm can produce an output equal to Y1, then it will also be able to produce any fraction of it. In other words, if Y1 is an element of the production set Y, and lambda is between 0 and 1, then lambda Y1 is also an element of Y. Convexity says that if Y1 and Y2 are elements of the production set Y, then a combination of both, such as Y3, is also an element of the production set. Now let's learn about isoquants which are very helpful when analyzing the production function. On the following graph, we have the production factors needed to produce a good. The x-axis or horizontal axis shows the amount of capital needed for production, while the y-axis or vertical axis shows the amount of labor needed. Graphically, the shape of an isoquant will depend on the type of good or service we are looking at. The shape of isoquants is also in close relation with the term's marginal rate of technical substitution and returns to scale. In this case, the curve is the typical representation for a common isoquant line. All points along the curve give the same level of output. What changes is the combination of the production factors. The shape of the curve shows what amount of capital the producer can stop applying when increasing the amount of labor, while maintaining the quantity of output produced constant. This relation gives us the marginal rate of technical substitution between these inputs, which is the slope of the curve in each of its points. For example, at this specific point, we need 10 units of capital and 2 units of labor in order to produce a given amount of output. However, if we move along the curve, we get different input combinations, but always the same amount of produced output. For example, at this point, we need the opposite quantities for the same level of output. The same quantity is produced, but with a different combination. An increase in production will only come when we displace the isoquant curves outwards. Here, with each new isoquant curve, we are increasing the total production level. Note that each new production level requires more of both inputs, but also allows for different combinations of inputs. A good understanding of a firm's production function is important, since it represents how the firm does things. It's important to also understand costs, in order to do a proper cost analysis of the firm, both in the short and long run.